So we're going to make a set of working drawings for this C-clamp that has four different parts to it. And we're going to make a parts list or a bill of materials for it that'll have some columns such as the item numbers so we can refer to those items. And then we'll have detailed drawings of each of these items as well. So let's jump on over to AutoCAD and make this thing. Well, there it is. I made it. Um, we're not going to go over the modeling of each of these pieces, but basically use the Revolve tool for the um, swivel here. Uh, just added a couple pieces of uh, cylinders to create this uh, the screw um, the pin is uh, just a cylinder and two spheres joined together and the clamp body is a polyline uh, chamfered once extruded and then chamfered again for the for the lateral edges being being chamfered Okay, so now that we have it all built, I put them on different layers just so we can see them in contrast to each other. Um, but I want to go to Layout View, and I'm going to start with the assembly drawing that has the bill of materials and everything in it. So let's go ahead and add it. I want the bill of materials up maybe on the upper left, so I'm going to keep, keep this item. And I don't think I need any other view, but maybe I'll just put a nice metric of it over on the right. Okay, this is basically the only view I need to show the different pieces. And so I want to label the pieces and want to have a bill of materials. So I'm going to add the border that we have to it. Now I'm going to add a bill of materials, which in my annotate ribbon is uh, I'm going to put it on the notes layer. There's my notes layer. Notice I do I have made a table style that has the GDD font in it. Not that that's that important, but it keeps the font the same throughout the drawing. So I'm just going to add a table. And how many columns do I want? Um, I think I want four, one for the item number, one for the quantity, one for the material, and one for a description of it, its name, or maybe the thread uh, call out and things. Uh, column width, uh, we'll start at one. We can adjust the size as needed. Um, the I do want a title. I'll just call it the parts list or bill of materials. Um, the header uh, will contain the the column headers and the data will have it. So we'll see what that looks like. I'll go ahead and stick it up in the corner. All right. So there's the bill of materials. Um, the first one, as we can see from the uh, the parts list in the, in the assignment here, problem 15.5, will have uh, an item. And then it's quantity. Um, I'm just going to put material next. Let's switch that around just a little bit. So item quantity and material first. I'll abbreviate some of this. OK. Um, in this column, I'm, I'm going to add a couple rows. So right click on the row number and row below. And I have four parts, so uh, one more. There we go, so item numbers. So I can arrow that down. They all get a quantity of one. And I'll add the material in the description. Um, just type it in later. So there's there's my bill of materials basically. So now I want to label the the parts on the drawing itself. I'll use the multi-leader for that. But before I do that, I'm going to set up the multi-leader style. I'm going to modify that a little bit. Instead of the normal M text, I've already changed it to a block, and I'll use a circle. 
and that's uh, a good way to do it. So I'll go ahead and add a multi-liter to each of these parts. Let's go to the midpoints of these. Stick it out far enough. If you go too close, I probably won't add it. So um, there's part, I think this is part number two, actually, looking at the parts. So yeah, the clamp body is number two. Uh, the pin is number one. The screw is three. So going, let's go to the pin here. Should be good. So it went away. Um, probably wasn't far enough off. Stick it out there. enough. So this is what constitutes a assembly drawing um, part bill of materials that includes the item number, the quantity, the material, description, and maybe even a name column. Um, I do probably want that description to be a little longer. Uh, maybe I can adjust the size of some of these columns to save myself some space. A couple other item things to work with in the table. I can highlight all all these columns and right click and uh, set the alignment to um, to a better looking alignment, like middle center. Could do all these that way, I suppose. Um, except the description. Probably don't want the description to be middle center, just left center. Now I can populate those uh, later. Add center lines to uh, your circular features. I need to put some hidden lines in. I'll go ahead and do that. Don't forget those things. I'm just going to do the hidden. So in this case, just want to come in, uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Well, this is metric, so uh, two millimeters, one and a half millimeters will uh, be pretty good. Um, but now I'm in inches, uh, so it's going to have to be a sixteenth. Let's not go that far. There's a 32nd of an inch at this scale. It okay, there are the thread uh, roots. And a center line uh, would go in there and, and finish that off. We don't need dimensions on an assembly drawing, although some overall dimensions may be useful, such as the height of this this entire um, uh, C-clamp or maybe the diameter of the screw or something that, that would be useful. Um, but that's going to be in the description. So just, just some basic uh, dimensions uh, might be useful. Uh, but we want to leave most of them out for the detailed drawings. So detailed drawings, just real quick. I'm not going to go over all of them, but uh, let's go to the second layout. 
And I'm going to do base for model space. Now here, I just want to do, let's say, the clamp body. I might be able to do the pin and the swivel and, and maybe even the screw in, in a separate drawing, but the clamp body I'm going to dedicate to its own drawing. So I'm going to hit the select option. So that's E uh, space. And uh, seeing that none of them are, uh, all of them are selected right now, I'm just going to hold the shift key down and click a few of these to get rid of them out of the selection set space. And now I'm only uh, showing my C-clamp body in this view. So I'll go ahead and add the views to it. And there. Now I can, I can name these layouts as well. So um, this would be body. Layout two, uh, I'll just call that the screw, and we'll add layout two. Delete that viewport and add another one. So we can see the process here. Hold the shift key down, and we'll take out, we'll let the screw be its own drawing. Probably don't need too many views for this. Okay, and then um, go ahead and fully dimension those. Uh, probably don't need both those dimensions. Probably don't even need the, the end views at all. Anyway, um, go ahead and add the uh, other parts in the layout, probably a good one to do. I can do the swivel and the pin in the same drawing just because uh, they're small and um, maybe I do want to just do one at a time here. So here's the swivel and I can place it. Don't need a 3D view of that, and I can add another view with just the pin here. So um, at this scale, I might want to change the scale, and that's easy enough to do. Right now, I'm doing 1 to 40 for some reason. Um, I need to be using my default metric scale 1 to 25.4, which would look pretty well, and so forth and so on. That would get you the rest of your drawings. This is what we call a working set of drawings, or a set of working drawings. This allows us to have detailed drawings of all the parts, as well as an, an uh, assembly drawing that labels the parts and has a bill of materials with it. One other uh, layout that, that we want to add would be this, one that we don't need to delete. And we'll talk about adding materials and things to it later, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and make this my viewport and hide the viewport layer. I'll put this on the viewport layer and hide it. A little warning saying you're doing that. That way I can put my own border on it. And there's the pictorial view of the part as well. So for visualization purposes, we have a, this would be like a cover sheet that shows the part in its assembled form or an exploded assembly where the pieces are apart from each other. But in this case, it's simple enough to where they can be assembled and we can see what each part is. And, and that looks good. So we have detailed drawings. We have assembly drawings assembly drawing and, and the uh, pictorial view of it.